Hello, welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 17 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about binding data from a database table to a drop-down list control. As part of this example, I have TBL city table within the sample database and I want the data that's available in this table to be displayed within a drop-down list control in an ASP.NET web application. Specifically, I want the city name to be displayed within the drop-down list. And obviously to do that, the ASP.NET web application should be capable of retrieving data from a database. And we have discussed about retrieving data from a database in a great detail in ADO.NET video series. If you haven't watched that, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. Okay, so let's drag and drop the drop-down list control. So I have this drop-down list control. Now obviously, we need to write the ADO.NET code to connect to the database and retrieve data from that table. And obviously to do that, I have a connection string in our web.config file. The name of the connection string is dbcs. And if you look at the data source, it's dot, which means the local SQL Server installation and the database is sample. We are using Windows authentication. Okay, so let's read that connection string from web.config file and obviously to do that we make use of the configuration manager class. So configuration manager dot connection strings property and we need to specify the name of the connection string which in our case is dbcs dot get the connection string. Okay, so let's store that in a variable called CS standing for connection string. So let's create the connection object and to do that we can make use of the SQL connection class. So SQL connection con is equal to new SQL connection and obviously to establish a SQL connection you need a connection string. So copy the connection string and use that variable. Okay, if you want the connection to be automatically closed then use the using block so if we use the using block, we don't have to explicitly close the connection. As soon as the scope of this connection object is lost, it will be automatically closed for us. So now let's prepare the SQL command that we want to execute. So SQL command cmd is equal to new SQL command. Now if you look at the query, this is what is the query here. Now let's execute that query. And then we need to pass another parameter, which is the connection object, because the command object needs to know on which database it has to execute this specific command. Okay, so the next thing is obviously we execute the command, but then the most important thing before that is to actually open the connection. So let's open the connection, connection.open. And now look at this. The execute reader method of the command object returns a SQL data reader object. And we can set that as the data source for the drop-down list control. If you remember, in the previous sessions of this video series, we have seen how to add you know, list items to a drop-down list at the design time. So if you haven't watched those videos first, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. Okay, so I can now say drop-down list dot data source so the data source for the drop-down list is going to be the, you know, the result of, you know, executing this query. Whatever result that you get back, set that as the data source for your drop-down list, which means you're technically saying, okay, set this table as the data source for this drop-down list one. And all you have to do is call the drop-down list data bind method. Okay, cool. So now let's go ahead and run this and see what's going to happen. So our intention is basically to display the city name within that drop-down list control. So when the drop-down list actually renders, look at this, it's actually showing, first of all, look at this, how many rows we have. We have got four rows here. And within the drop-down list, there are four list item objects, which is good. But then the problem is, instead of showing the city name, it's showing an object name, system.data.common.data.record internal. And that's obvious because, look at this, what you're doing here, you're saying, you know, when you execute this command, you get a reader object, and you're setting that reader as the data source for the drop-down list one control. And if you look at the reader, what does the reader have in it? It has got these three columns, okay? And you're saying, okay, this is the table which is going to act as the data source for this drop-down list control. But then, how will the drop-down list know which column in this table it should use to display that? 
okay so we have to tell that so should you should it use city id or city name or country okay how how will the drop down list know that we have to tell that and how do we tell that there are two properties for the drop down list which are nothing but the data text field and data value field data text field is something that gets displayed to the user and data value field is the value you know that the list item object has which we can use to actually store in the database which doesn't really make sense to the user you know if you look at this table i want the city id to be the drop down list list item object value and the city name to be the you know the text that we actually display within the drop down list so this this will be the text property of the list item object and this will be city id will be the value property of the list item object and you have to specify that to the drop down list okay and how do we do that using the data text and data value properties okay so let's see how do we do that now look at this drop down list one dot data text field so what is the text field that we want to use city name column so let's copy that city name column and use that as the data text field. And along the same lines, let's set the data value field. So I want the data value field to be the city ID. So copy that, paste it here. Okay, so now let's close this browser window, rerun the application and see if that's going to fix our issue. Unfortunately, it's not going to fix our issue. And Look at this, we have the same output. Now, if you look at the code, we have set the data text field, data value field. But then, the reason why it is still showing this data record internal is because you are doing, you are setting these properties after you have actually bound the database, you know, the drop down list control to the data source. You will have to specify these properties before you call the data bind method. Because if the drop-down list has already been bound to the data, there's no way you can change it afterwards. Okay, so do it before you call data bind. I mean, it's enough if you do it just before you call the data bind. Okay, so if I run that, now it should display the city name as expected and city ID will be the value for that list item object. Look at this. Okay, now is it mandatory that I have to do this in code? No. If you want, you can do that in the HTML as well. So within the source, I can set the data text field and data value field here. So let's get rid of these two properties from there. And I want to use city name as the data text field. So I can go to the web, I mean the source of the HTML, and I can specify data text field which is going to be city name and data value field is going to be city ID. Copy that, use that as the data value field. So now, if you look at this, within the code, we don't really have the properties. We are setting them in the HTML, but that should still be fine. So when the page renders, you should see the city names as expected. Cool. So specify the data text field and data value field properties of the drop-down list control if you want, you know, depending on what you want to display in that drop-down list. Data text field and data value field properties can be set either in the code or in the HTML, and we have just seen that. And make sure these properties, if you're setting them in code, you set them before a call to the data bind method. And another simple improvement that you can do for this code, look at this one. Um, let's drag and drop a button control onto the web form okay and this button it's not going to do anything okay it's just going to post the page back so now let's run this so when the page renders obviously it loads the data from the database and displays that within the drop down list control and where is it happening it's happening within the page load event of this web form now when i click this button look at that it's, it shows the values as expected, but let's say, you know, no matter how many times you click, it, it shows them only once as expected, which is good. But then, you know, you know that ASP.NET controls retain their view state across post back, okay? But then the way you have written this code is that, you know, this piece of code gets executed every time you post the page back. Okay, and we don't really have to load this data for the drop-down list, you know, every time when you post the page back. 
you know I want to load this data only the first time when the web form loads after that if for any reason I have to if I have to post the page back I don't have to reload this data from the database because drop-down list is an ASP.NET control which is capable of retaining a stored state so to slightly improve the performance of your application you can wrap this entire code within this is not, not post back property which means this piece of code is going to be executed only the first time this web page gets loaded which means if it's only a get request if it's a post back request this code will not be executed and the view state of the drop down list control is going to remember the items that we have loaded into that control the first time when the web form loaded okay so if we run this application now it's going to display the you know this is the initial get request so the, it executes this code and displays this data within the drop down list but then if i post the page back by clicking the button control you know look at that the values are still retained but it's now slightly better than the previous time because uh, you know the values are loaded from the view state we are not really making another database call to load this data for this drop down list on this slide you can find resources for asp.net c sharp and sql server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day